And we're back with some more Total War Warhammer 3 battle content. I have once again decided to change up the order of what I'm showing, and today we're going to be taking a look at Cafe versus Ogre Kingdoms in a land battle. Decided to do this one because the corn, or the yeah, corn versus Inch battle is actually on the same map as the battle I showed yesterday. Plus, get some Cafe action in here for today. Standard caveats, this game is still a work in progress. Uh, things are mostly final, but details are subject to change. In particular, in this replay, you'll see some artil artillery targeting arrows that are extremely bright, shining neon green. Those are a particular issue that was highlighted by Creative Assembly that is being worked on. Remember, this is recorded from an in-development build of the game so without further ado let's go on and get into the battle now as this deployment phase uh, gets underway here we'll talk a little bit about the army composition we got meow ying leading the way uh one terracotta sentinel we've got both lantern and a sky junk two units of rockets and one cannon three celestial dragon guard for a strong backbone of the army uh one crane gunner as well three crossbows and uh, two halberds and three sword and shield jade warriors, as well as the yeah the three jade warrior crossbows as well. So, uh, pretty fun stuff. We'll watch as these uh, various units get deployed. Another thing to remember about Grand Cathay is their yin and yang. Uh, you'll get buffs by melee and ranged units standing near each other. Uh, it's nice to have the the lantern and the sky junk to kind of spread out. So even if you're round. Skirmish troops get routed. You can still get the benefit of that uh, synergy. Now we'll talk a little bit about the ogres. You can see the bright artillery targeting there. Uh, anyway, uh, junk on the left is going to open up here. The rockets are going to open up. They will do pretty decent damage considering most of the ogre monstrous infantry is light armor. There's some noblars, plenty of bulls. We've got some cavalry, thunder tusk, uh, giant. Uh, Firebelly, Scrag leading the way. Uh, some man eater pistols. Man eater is great weapons. Uh, so far, it's just going to be ogres running across this little uh, stream area here. There's a few choke points Cafe can kind of set up, but there's still plenty of space to flank around as well. There's going to be some Noblar trappers flanking around there. Uh, some, I believe there's some Saber Tusks. Or, yeah, Saber Tusks as well. Fun stuff. The rockets are doing some pretty good work and already routing off some of the Noblars, even shattering a unit there, so that's pretty good. Uh, the Celestrum... Celestial Dragon Guard kind of taking the flanks, just holding firm. I don't know, I guess that unit must have taken a couple of Javelin Volleys, which managed to take out five unit bottles. Pretty impressive stuff, honestly. You can see that fist gets dropped there, that little spell from the Ogres. And uh, unfortunately, these Ogres are getting an uphill charge, so that's not great. But the Ogre Charge ability should allow them to get straight into the Braced Halberds and not be too much subject to their charge defense. But uh, Creative Assembly employee making a little bit of a mistake here and keeping his forces a little bit too tight. He needs to spread out, especially his crossbows, a little bit more because as that front line gets collapsed by the ogres, uh, his crossbow will start to take damage as well. Uh, but for the time being, it looks like they are holding... Uh, yeah, serious loading in of the ogres <laughs> on various fronts, and you can see that the Jade Warriors are starting to take significant damage on the front line. Uh, a little bit of healing, going to try and sustain them, but it's not going to be enough. It will soon route, especially with the terror of the giant nearby. I'm gonna throw down this uh, vortex here. It's targeting. It looks like a vortex, and it actually does pretty good damage to monstrous infantry, which vortexes don't always. But uh, yeah, very interesting stuff. I love the animation on that one, even though it looks more like Dwellers Below. It is actually it seems to be more of a pure vortex. Now you're going to hit the transformation as here comes the Sabertusks and the Noblar Trappers in the back line doing a great job going after that artillery. Sneaky AI play is going to shut down the rockets and a big break in the front line so things are looking a little dicey for Grand Cathay but Meow Ying still quite healthy. And those three Celestial Dragon Guard also basically completely untouched at this point even if the Jade Warriors are getting absolutely pounded in the front line <laughs> and uh, the Crossbowmen having a hard time getting free to start shooting, but the crane gunners have been able to keep firing this whole time. It looks like they're going after the uh, units in the back line there. Those man-eater pistols definitely taking up quite a bit of damage. The unbreakable sentinel in the center, of course, uh, continuing to hold out and do the fancy twirling attack animations. <laughs> Just absolutely helicoptering all the ogre troops. Uh, the 
Sky Lantern still has plenty of ammunition, but the junk is starting to run a little bit lower. Another Earth Blood going to be cast down here. Did I cast it there? No, perhaps I'll cast it here. Yes, probably a good idea to keep it on Meow Ying. Probably would have been good to hit both Meow Ying and the Terracotta Sentinel, actually, with that. But, hey, there you go. Could also say that this is just played by, uh, you know... Uh, you could say an average Joe, to be honest. Not like a high-level multiplayer player, but more of a reflection of your typical, maybe, campaign player, which is like, you know, 80 to 90% of the player base, so... Not gonna criticize too much the, uh... You know, perhaps mistakes as I normally would <laughs> in the multiplayer cast, but there you go. Still very cool to see. The Sentinel's definitely, uh, getting a little bit low on HP, but... Uh, yeah, regrowth misclicked onto a unit of crossbows there. That will definitely bring them back. Um, but more forces rallying here. I do have to say the little ambient occlusion outline on the artillery does make it a lot easier to find uh, unmounted artillery pieces. So I'm a big fan of that. Especially like the elven bolt throwers on certain maps can be super hard to, excuse me, spot. But nice cinematic shot of the terracotta sentinel duking it out with the giant. Oh! Slash right to the face. I don't think those are actually matched combat animations. They might be though Giant headbutt to the ter terracotta sentinel. I don't know if I've seen that animation before. Maybe they are actually matched Animations, that's very cool if that is the case But uh, fire belly getting in there still trying to mess up as much as he can He just doesn't have a lot of armor, so he's gonna start to take some damage, but uh, Definitely buttering that bread in the back line meow ying drops down to deal with him and at this point, the Celestial Dragon Guard are kind of just grinding down what's left. The Ogre Charge starting to run out of steam a little bit there. Um, as their units uh, run out of HP and leadership. The, you know, Scrag, it looks like, is basically done for as well. Uh, he is coming back, but he's very, very low on HP. Now Ying should be able to finish off the Fire Belly there. Crossbow's coming back, starting to shoot various targets. And although Cathay took a lot of damage, none of their troops actually got fully shattered or, uh, you know, chased off the battlefield, so... Nice benefit there, a little bit of a speed debuff on Scrag just to keep him from getting back in the fight as the rest of the Ogres kind of wash into the Halberds. Uh, one thing to note on my video about Cathay, uh, some people pointed out there is actually a formation attack toggle down at the bottom for the units which do have formation attack, which is awesome. You know, I'm, I mentioned in that video, formation attack, you can see here sometimes the units like weirdly form up into squares like facing the wrong direction. So I probably myself am going to turn off formation of attack most of the time. I'll have to do some testing to see really when it's going to be most useful. But uh, Ogres hit army losses there. Miao Ying and her forces are going to chase them off. Scrag and his lads heading back to fill their bellies and I'm sure be back to fight another day. But the awesome shot of the carnage of the battlefield. That's one thing I've always loved about Total War, even since the very, very beginning. I know some people turn off corpses for performance reasons, but I, I like to leave them on. So, you know, you appreciate the carnage more. The <laughs> sort of spectacle of everything, seeing the piles of, of dead stuff everywhere. Anyway, awesome battle. Uh, what did we learn from this? Nothing really too specific except that, uh, you know, the, the Celestial Dragon Guard do seem to be pretty strong. Again, the, the balancing of everything is definitely not final, so don't take it, everything as gospel here, but it does seem like Celestial Dragon Guard are going to be pretty strong late-game Halberd unit, which is nice. Uh, well, they'll probably be the best human infantry overall uh, in terms of quality, if I had to guess. My, they're probably going to be over a thousand points in terms of cost. I mean, we'll see. But, like, great swords, they, they'll, great swords will beat them 1v1, obviously, but overall, as a unit, they'll kind of be more uh, versatile and just better than great swords, arguably. We'll have to see. But regardless, very fun battle. What else did we learn? Uh, the rockets are very cool, even if they're non AP, gonna be good against low armor factions, even monstrous infantry. Uh, ogres do seem to have a pretty pro potent frontal attack. I know some people were a little bit worried about ogres might be weak after my video of Zinch versus ogres. You'll see from some of the other videos upcoming. I do think ogres uh, are going to be the trickiest for creative assembly to balance, but they have the potential to be very strong. Certainly here, um, you know, it is just against the AI, but even still in a what could be considered a pretty disfavorable situation, trying to charge uphill into braced, you know, elite anti-large infantry. They still did reasonably well, so. Definitely looking forward to seeing some more gameplay and playing it, of course, myself. Be sure to stay tuned, subscribe for that, so you don't miss out. 
Uh, I thank you all so much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure. Be sure to like, subscribe. Again, if you want to see more Warhammer 3 content, uh, hit that bell notification icon. So when I do upload those videos, you'll be notified. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day. See you next time.